By now, it's a familiar scene. Protesters jam the main square of a capital city. They wave banners, demand that the he head of state resign. CNN shows crowds as far as the eye can see. We're captivated. What can stop the momentum? Well, martial law. Tanks roll in. Armored personnel carriers crash through barricades. Soon, hundreds lie dead, mostly students. It's Tiananmen Square, 25 years ago next month. In the years since, it's as if the political clock has stopped, the hopes of Tiananmen frozen in time. China won't let the dissidents whose ideas lit the spark of Tiananmen even begin to rub sticks together. Penn leader and Nobel Prize winner Liu Xiaobo in jail. His wife, poet Liu Jia, under house arrest. Last week, journalist Gao Yu just disappeared. The Chinese government takes plenty of prisoners, but very few chances. 50,000 censors scour the internet erasing rumor, dissent, and truth. And yet, China prospers. China is everywhere, and everyone is in China. Hollywood directors bring Chinese censors on set so that they can get their films into that mega market. Western museums and university satellite campuses let China govern what paintings show and what student newspapers report. In this room sit people engaged with China every day. We borrow, we invest, we sell, we market. We all face dilemmas. We hope our products, platforms, movies, and books infuse new ideas that tip the scales toward a freer future. But if we compromise too much, we fear betraying China's future, unwittingly putting our thumb on the side of the status quo, the censors, the jailers. That's why we're here tonight for Penn, to stand with those who write, create, and tweet at their peril, those who imagine a different future and will one day create it. When Ai Weiwei was barred from leaving China for his exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum last month, he asked Penn to protest on behalf of all persecuted Chinese artists and writers. We defied the ban. We brought Ai Weiwei to Brooklyn as a 40-foot high video projected on the museum's facade. We amassed hundreds in person and many thousands online. But when we invited big name musicians to join, some said they'd gladly stand with Penn on Syria or Sudan, but they had tours planned in China. They couldn't risk their visas. Governments are afraid too. For 25 years, the UN hasn't passed a single human rights resolution on China, not even after Tiananmen. As China's influence grows, the silence enforced on the inside risks becoming silence on the outside. That's what makes Penn's work, breaking the silence, lonelier and more important than ever. There's a difference between Penn and most of the groups we all support. Some work on problems that mean life or death for millions, things like malaria or malnutrition. At Penn, we defend free expression worldwide, but we also defend one person. We defend Muhammad al ajami a poet in a Qatari prison. We defend Eskander Nega, a journalist in an Ethiopian jail cell. In defending one person, one catalyst, we stand for the free expression that is essential to fighting malaria, malnutrition, sexual violence, or environmental degradation. 
All of those scourges feed on silence. One of the most potent ways pen breaks the silence is the pen Barbara Goldsmith Freedom to Write Award. Over the years, we've won freedom for 35 out of 38 jailed writers, including last year's honoree, Turkish writer and translator, Aisha Burkte, who was released last December. I want to recognize Barbara Goldsmith for her vision and leadership and for this extraordinary tra track record. Please stand, Barbara. Barbara Goldsmith is just one person. Because of her, writers go free. Each one of us here tonight is just one person, but we each have the power to help one person, like Eskander, or Muhammad, or Lu Xiaobo, or tonight's awardee, Ilham Toti. He's a pen member and a Uyghur. The only thing more dangerous these days in China than being a dissident is being a dissident from a marginalized ethnic minority. Last year, he voiced fear about the government closing in, that it might engineer a false confession or even a suicide. Yet he did not flee or retreat, and now he's in jail. The fights we wage do not end when the square is seized. 25 years later, we do not forget that one lonely student standing before the tanks in Tiananmen. He was one person too, yet he inspired millions. Ilham Todi inspires us. Let's learn about this courageous writer who deserves our help. And then let's work to win his freedom. Let's petition, let's tweet, let's march, let's pledge that as long as he will not stay silent, neither will we. Welcome, and if you would begin your testimony. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jawhar Ilham and I'm a student at Indiana University. Over a year ago, I set out to accompany my father Ilham Tokti to the US. Preparing to depart China, my father and I were detained. My father was held beaten and forbidden from leaving China, all for writing about abuse of civil and religious rights. Ilham Tokti is an economics professor, first and foremost, at a very prestigious university in Beijing. He's ethnically a Uyghur uh, and very proud of it. He's a member of Uyghur Pen. It's an independent Chinese pen that advocates for Uyghur language and cultural rights. He's also a public intellectual and he is the foremost Uyghur public intellectual in the People's Republic of China. His aspiration was to see the full rights to free expression, to cultural expression, guaranteed for the Uyghurs. The Uyghurs feel that they are looked down upon, that they're discriminated against. A number of years ago, he started Uyghur Online, which he intended to act as a sort of bridge in which debate could take place between Han Chinese and Uyghurs in a peaceful, rational, reasonable way. That's really the thing that I think irked the Chinese government the most and they, they saw as a threat. In July of 2009, there were clashes, violent clashes in Xinjiang. The people who disappeared, Ilham kept asking where they were. He put names and faces on these people. And I can tell you, Ilham is not a naive person. He knew that by engaging in such activities, he was placing himself in danger. Ilam Toti's arrest was very much an arrest foretold by him. 
he anticipated that this might happen, so much so that he left a statement behind to be read and published in the event of his arrest. Rather chillingly, he's anticipating the possibility that he might be tortured. I have never spoken like this before, but I am almost confident that the Chinese government is trying to get rid of me this time. I feel it is necessary for me to leave a few words behind before I no longer have the ability to do so. The path I have pursued all along is an honorable and a peaceful one. If I say anything that deviates from my morals after my arrest, know that those are not my words. The only way I might utter such words is under abnormal circumstances. Please save this conversation from today and be sure to keep it until you need to release it. Ilham Tokti was at home with his children. Public security, state security burst into his apartment. In front of his children, they dragged him away. And that's the last that anybody saw of him. I saw the news. Your father is arrested now. I couldn't move at all. I forgot how to think. I forgot how to talk. My brothers were really scared. My brother described that they he, he was crying, said they beat my father. They just arrested him and confiscated everything. He was denied any access to lawyers. And recently he has now been charged with separatism, which in China has very serious punishment right up to the death penalty. Ilham Tohti, like other dissidents in the People's Republic of China, must not be forgotten. And that's why the award by Penn is so significant and means so much to Ilham's supporters and to his friends. He's been arrested numerous times before, and yet he's continued, and it's that kind of astonishing courage that we salute with this award. We have given many, many Freedom to Write awards. When we have had writers who were being tortured, had disappeared, we have gotten all but four out of prison. It's just the most gratifying thing. While the Chinese were not happy when they heard we decided to give this award to Ilham Todi, they issued a potent statement saying that we were giving this award to a criminal, that we were interfering with the Chinese judicial process. Clearly this has gotten under their skin. The more attention there is to this case, the greater the chance that the Chinese government will step back from the worst. I'm sure that they will not release him very soon. I won't give up. My father has protected me for 18 years, and I think it's time for me to start to work for him, protect him now. We have here with us tonight to accept the award, the award on Ilham Todi's behalf, his daughter, Jauhar Ilham, and this is a girl who came here by herself at age 18 when the Chinese wouldn't let her father board the plane. And now that he's been arrested, she's testified before Congress. She has an op-ed in the New York Times this morning. And I just find myself thinking about how proud her father would be. Welcome, Jauhar. Thank you very much for the honor that you are granting to my father this evening. Thank you too for giving me the opportunity to stand here in this place and accept it. Frankly, I had never imagined that I would be in a, such a situation. 
I never thought that one day my father would be imprisoned in Xinjiang and I would be on the other side of the world <laughs> trying my best to speak, speak for him. This is, not something, and I, uh, this is not something that I have ever prepared for and I hope you will forgive my unpolished English and my nervousness which is increased by being in the presence of so many renowned writers and activists. My father, Ilham Tohti, has used only one weapon in his struggle for the basic rights of Uyghur of Xinjiang. Words. Spoken, written, distributed, and posted. This is all that he has ever had at his disposal, and all that he has ever needed. And this is what China finds so threatening. Locations may differ, countries and societies might, may differ, but the fear of free thoughts and the, off, the power of words still sadly tortures the minds of so many of those who rule. My father spoke out and will continue to speak out for those who have been wrongly imprisoned, who have been beaten, who have been discriminated, against because of their religion, language, and cultural, and who have been disappeared. His work is not simply something for the Uyghurs. It is for China too, and for everyone in our common world society. To have someone who has been imprisoned for his dream of a society founded on basic rights, and who is locked up far away in a prison in the ancient Silk Road regions recognized this evening here in New York by Penn fills me with hope. To know that the person whom you honored is my father fills me with humility. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have a final request of you. Um, there's a way you can help my father right now. Um, like Barbara Goldsmith always says, keep the spotlight on. I need your help shining the spotlight on my dad. <laughs> you may have found signs at your table that say free ilham on your table. Please take out your phones, pick up the signs, and take a group photo with your table. Um, we are going to do the same up here on stage. Uh, bless it out as far as you can with the hashtag free hum. The more people who know, the safer my father will be. Thank you for helping me fight for my fathers. Thank you.